Mr. Annie News got us a new solo leveling episode 6 cut content. Let's see what he has to say. This right here is what makes solo leveling, well, solo leveling. Okay. It's not some deep story with complex characters or convoluted plot elements. This is something I keep seeing as a criticism. Like, people are like, yo, solo leveling ain't shit. It doesn't have a big brain plot. This is Unga Boonga. And I'm like, yeah. Don't you know what you signed up for? I knew that this is a power fantasy. I just want to see Sung Jin Mu be all cool and be Sung Drip Woo and do all this epic shit. That's all I care about. I don't care about a deep story in this show. I don't even expect it. If they give us some kind of plot, that's a bonus. That's a cherry on top. I'm not expecting a writing on the, lame, on the, on the level of Vinland Saga from this and nobody should. So if people actually use this as a, as a point of contention when they say soul leveling ain't shit, it's like, bro, do you even know which restaurant you're in? You're in McDonald's. But it's instead of portrayal of one man's desire to become stronger. It's the essence of power fantasy refined down to its best. Everything we love to see from them shown over and over, all of which leads to that same satisfying conclusion that we got in this episode. Yes, now, kill them all! Your comments at the end, but I'm genuinely curious to know whether you find the anime good or not now. Has it finally clicked as something you think- I feel like this might have been the tipping point. I feel like if you weren't- sold by episode two like this isn't the show for you and beyond that if you weren't sold by the end of the kasaka fight like that episode where we defeated kasaka in the instance dungeon and then saved the regular people outside by throwing our sword at that golem if that didn't do anything for you like you're just not made for power fantasies or these kind of genre and there's nothing wrong with that you can go watch other shows but like if you're not sold by that i doubt episode six is like episode six is like beyond right this is like the first moment where we actually kill i think this is the episode where i can definitively say sung jim who has changed even though he has been slowly changing throughout the last couple episodes but i'm talking about the killing that i'm sure any news will talk about soon you'll enjoy your are you still on the fence even after that banger of an episode last week either way if you're here now that means you want to know more about solo leveling i'm here to farm so, let's take a look at the full extent of sung's rage in the novels and the importance of this turning point from naive hunter to cold-blooded killer it was a series of events that can be summarized pretty much like this. Nani? He was okay. super fast. Maybe not entirely, but that was to segue into today's sponsor. I got a Raid Shadow Legends ad coming up, right? What is this? For Figurama. Specifically Figurama. the upcoming release of their new Fist of the North Star. The fuck? That was a pretty good ad intro. That, that, that was a good ad segue. He gave us the fist to the North Star. You're already dead <laughs> into figurines. <laughs> All right. Bro gets the most interesting sponsors, man. What the fuck? Anyways, back to the main content. The real hunt begins. Covering chapters 21 to 24 of the manhwa and chapters 20 to 24 of the web novel. If you remember what I had mentioned last video, one of the core differences between <laughs> Sung in the novel and Sung in the anime the is muscles. the confidence he had Never when mind. approaching pretty much everything in the gate. Opportunity was slipping right through his fingers, so when the first sign showed that Huang and his group were going to betray him... Yeah, first sign! This is what it looked like in the webtoon, by the way. This is Huang Dong Suk on the left side. You see his red eyes and the smile? Like, they didn't show us that in the anime, but in the webtoon, it immediately... This is like a pawn meeting. First things first, signing the quota. And they were already evil. Sung became excited at the possibility of all those opportunities returning to him. He literally couldn't wait for Huang to make his move, simply because that would mean he alone could be the one to indulge in all the experience and essence stones. Mm. So, as Sung waited in excited anticipation for what he knew was coming, he continued to follow Huang solely for this moment here. He, like, the wanted to get betrayed. The betrayal in which everything would be handed off to him. He didn't feel bad or angry that this was the outcome. He was happy! In the end, it was exactly what he wanted. What the fuck?! This is not the character from the anime. In the anime, he even had like a, what's it called? Like a whole monologue about after he got hit by that magician, right? He, he got like pretty injured. And like, he's like trying to get out. And that's when like the new quest shows up. But he's like thinking to himself, it's like justifying like why it's okay to kill. It's like, oh yeah, it's just survival of the fittest. But like, bro was ready to kill from the, like from the initial beginning of this arc in the West. It was that exclusive opportunity to continue Or was it the light stronger? novel? I don't know. It was after the group had blocked the entrance that Sung would then check to see just how trapped he was. As it turns out, the rocks were much lighter than he had initially anticipated. Lifted so them. much so that if he really wanted to escape, all he needed to do was apply a bit of power and move them. Okay. Of course, Sung had zero intention of leaving, since to him the boss in front of him was something he was fully confident he could handle right now. 
If it wasn't, then he wouldn't have let Huang trap them or even walk away for that matter. It's because he knew he could in fact beat this enemy that Sung would face this spider with the calm Still according to plan. of an experienced veteran. It's another example of that confidence that I was talking about in the beginning. Yes, his heart was still racing and his breath speeding up, but his anxiety was nowhere near as close to the level it was when outside the instance dungeon. And like, they, they keep going back to how like he's scared, but not really, because he just keeps remembering the statue. But like, the moral of the, 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 the moral of the story is like, I guess because we were traumatized by something that was so godlike already, everything else just feels like trash. So like you should try to apply this to your own life. Just become so traumatized that no other pain seems the same moving forward. <laughs> Probably yes, not a good lesson, honestly. The instance dungeon. Compared to that, this was just another day at work for him. Yeah, just now, like a little casual PTSD if that could hurt anyone. But differently, since the way he composes himself in that is mainly by comparing the spider to the statue god. When thinking about the completely different level that that boss was on, this spider was once again nothing special to him. They're all trash compared Certainly to the statue. nothing he needed to be extremely concerned about. This brings us now to the fight itself, where the essence of the Manwa was captured pretty much perfectly. There was a moment where Sung commented on how he was losing track on how long he'd been fighting for, but that was just more of a descriptive lead-in for the fatigue concept. Right, there's a fatigue the mechanic. The novel, on the other hand, focuses on Sung's entire thought process, and it's here we see Sung reflect a little bit of shadow. What? what I mean is that, just like how Sid analyzes attacks then reacts in the most refined way possible, okay. so too was Sung doing the same then creating an opening for a counterattack. So you're telling me this character was thinking about how he's getting attacked and was able to then counterattack by thinking. I know that, like, there's no need to, like, like, criticize or, like, you know, make jabs. I mean, what? There's similarities because the fucking character used his brain in combat thinking about, oh, shit, here comes a right hook. I might as well do something different. He was dodging the spider with the least amount of movement possible, then proceeding okay. forward one methodically crafted step at a time. I did love these moments where his eyes just turn into like laser eyes. Time. At first, the spider's attacks were nothing but a blur, but after dodging the first set on instincts alone, his focus on their movements made them a lot more visible. Now, when you say dodge by instincts alone, is this perception? Because if we're talking about how he's able to see these blurry attacks in a more acute way, I think that has to do with agility, right? Agility, it's agility in this game, right? It's not dexterity. Agility is the stat that makes you process things faster. You would think that agility would make you faster. No. That's strength. Strength just fortifies all physical abilities. But I'd like to think that perception is the intuition, and agility is then turning that intuition into something that's more processable. Does that even make sense? He began to see it was just a sequential movement of left leg, right leg, and that made dodging a whole lot easier. It was by the time he was in range of the spider's head, though, that something felt off as the spider's attacks were slowing. Initially, he thought it was just because he had gotten used to them, but... But that's our dagger's attacks, right? His refined senses assured him that they were in fact getting slower. The sound of their impacts had the dagger? definitely spaced out a bit. That's when Sung could hear the spider's mandibles twitching, and once again, out of pure instinct alone, he decided to dodge sideways rather than commit to the counterattack. That's perception again, right? That would turn out to be a life-saving one, since had he jumped forward, he would have been met with a face full of acid. The spider's counter for those who got too close to it. Sung would do his same dodge advance pattern to get in range of the spider's head again, but once again the acid would push him back. It seemed this combo of acid at close range and legs at long range was a bit more difficult. I ain't gonna lie, I kinda zoned out in this fight, like, because, yes, it's a boss fight, but like, nobody really cares at the end of the day, right? Like, no, nobody, everyone is just waiting in anticipation for Sung Jin Wu to just beat the spider. It's like, all right, finally. All right, where is Huang Dong Suk and his party? Are we going to kill them or not, right? So, like, this battle, I don't know. I, I feel like maybe when you're younger, you see crazy fights happening and your brain just goes, whoa! But at a certain point, you watch enough of this shit and you just get used to it. And it's like, if there's no stakes, if there's no plot relevance to why we need to beat this boss, and yes, we're stuck here because Huang Dong Suk trapped us and it's important to kill it because we might get killed and, you know, we want to take all the loot. But, you know, it's just like, did anyone actually care about the spider fight? Probably not as much as, you know, the outcome of the stuff after the spider fight, right? 
a challenge quickly turning the situation into something more dire since it was clear who out of the two of them would get tired first. Since the spider was only using its two front legs to attack, it was far more strenuous for Sung since he was using his entire body to dodge. I mean, yes there was zero wasted movement when he did, but at the same time it did still require incredible- Even the dodge, bro looks so saucy. Look at this shit, <laughs> he looks like a fucking model. ...amounts of energy to do so. So, we know at 70 fatigue he'll become a bit slower, but it's at 90 and above that his breath would cease and his body pretty much stop. What? You just stop breathing? Above 90 fatigue, you're just done? So, with very little time remaining to defeat this boss, Sung would rely on his skill instead of the status refresh. He would activate sprint to get- This is called dash in the anime, but it's called sprint in the, in the webtoon? ...to the spider's head faster, and that alone would- That was be a really cool animation. The advantage. This was another core difference between the novel and anime, since there was never that moment where Sung was losing. He didn't get hit or get pushed to the edge of defeat, and that in turn never resulted in him having to game the system like this. Oh! Wait, in the webtoon- Hold up. In the webtoon, he was struggling hard. It's right? It's an added scene I think makes Sung seem a bit more human. These are webtoon panels, right? Yeah, these are straight up webtoon panels. Of course, it's not fucking anime, so he's struggling way more in the webtoon. ...resulted in him having to game the system like this. It's an added scene I think makes Sung seem a bit more human since the novel hasn't really shown him struggle at all yet. Ever since he- Dude, Which is weird because he keeps showing me the fucking- No, well, technically it's from the novel, right? I keep forgetting. There's a novel and there's a webtoon and there's the anime. But he's showing me webtoon pictures and saying that, like, he's not struggling. But he is it's a disconnect there. It's a disconnected example he's showing me and, he and what he's talking he's about. He's shown him struggle at all yet. Ever since he'd gained the system, every opponent he's faced has just been, well, easy. So, for the manhwa and anime to slow things down and make encounters tough, to me that's an additional element that I think makes this power fantasy a lot more enjoyable. Constant ups and downs are a lot better than just a consistent linear rise to the top. Constant ups and downs are better than a linear rise to the top. Yeah, if there's like, like every episode you're just progressing into a smooth rise, then it doesn't feel like it's worth, you know? Like, like these, I, I like bursts of power, right? I, I like hitting a new level up, fucking level two Lucian power up in lane. You fucking dive, right? Like, like I like these burst rather than linear progression because linear at the end of the day feels like pretty slow so whenever like I, I and even like going down right the volatility of like hitting the peaks and then finding a new enemy and you're actually kind of down but then you figure out a new shit and you spike up again I, yeah i think he's right i think that this like this fucking up and down is still better than like slow power rise hello where's my video so with that being it for the spider, the essence core Sung had pulled was worth around $7,500. Damn! Okay, though, I think that the essence core that we pulled in the E rank place against the goblins, that shit was like, what, 80 bucks? At least I think that's what the number he gave me. Some people said that that's cap. I'm just fucking quoting any news, but all right, 7,500 USD, goddamn. This wasn't all the cores he had found, though, since within the spider's stomach Multiple was cores. numerous ant corpses yet to be digested. Oh. Valuable loot he wasn't just gonna leave on the table like that. So, after carp- <laughs> Okay, he looks way too evil here. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> the, the webtoon, like, makes him feel kind of- e uh, Even, like, in the anime, there are scenes where I feel like Sung Jin Moo is pretty dark. You know, it, it, he, he looks pretty dark, and I'm like, is he turning evil? Not really, he's just becoming more ruthless, but like, god damn, bro, look at this shit. Carving them out and looting the loot of what was essentially the spider's loot, Sung had earned himself an additional- <laughs> Oh, 10 essence stones from one boss. This is what money does to people. Additional 10 essence cores. Enough he believed not just to pay for rent, but perhaps even to get his own- Bro, rent is $300 for that luxury fucking apartment that houses him and his sister. Oh, and he has hospital to bills too, by the way. What the fuck, dude? Now. This would then lead to Jinho acting all nervous and eventually a promise that he wouldn't tell anyone anything. Aniki. You see, Sung was planning to ask for him not Some to water, say anything, Aniki. but it was right before he could that Jinho would assure him he wouldn't. <laughs> it's not like Sung was planning to coerce him into doing so, but for him to go ahead and do it on his own accord, well, that did make things a whole lot simpler. 
did Jin Ho do that out of respect and loyalty towards Sung Jin Mu, or was he scared shitless? I don't know. I feel like there's a little bit of both, right? He was always a good kid. He liked Sung Jin Mu from the beginning, but then after seeing him actually take down the spider and kill everybody, I think, like, he actually got terrified. It was actually something Sung was incredibly thankful for. Even if Jin Ho didn't, though. Like, like, look at this smile. It's so, like... Forced, you know, it's like, please don't kill me, please don't it's kill me. It's not like anyone would believe an E rank took down a C rank boss anyway. A fact made evident when Huang would come back in the next scene. To expand more on the plan he had for Jinho, the whole thing could be Dude, they wanted to loot his armor. Blackmail scheme. Since his dad was the chairman of a seven point. Right, 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 right. There's a. $5 billion. $7.5 billion net worth of the company. Eugene Construction. Damn. They're fucking cracked, but basically, like, Jinho pretty much is, like, the son of one of the richest people in Korea, right? And I think what it, they wanted to do was, like, some kind of, like, hostage situation? I don't know. What is it? Construction company. Wang figured he could make a lot more money from that than pretty much any amount of C-rank gates. All he had to do was film Jinho killing Sung Jinu, then the rest would be a simple matter of using that as blackmail. Okay. Now, the anime- Damn, that would've been fucking stupid. Stupid if that actually worked. Didn't involve Sung too much in Jinho's decision, but in both the manhwa and novel, Jinho would look back as if to ask Sung what he should do. In the novel, Sung would simply shrug as if to say, "Do what you." Nah, want. this 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 scene here, uh, this is like the the try. It's like a test, right? It's like a test of loyalty. But I think everybody knew, cause like it felt a little suspicious the way the camera was turning. It's like, is Jinho actually, you know? I'm gonna do that, but it's like, no, nah, he faces back and he's on our side. Want, then it was in the manhwa that he would just straight up accept it. He had accepted the outcome that Jinho would betray him and had- Of course you'd betray me. I'm weak. No, not anymore, you're not! Talked it up to him just being weak again. Of course, this wasn't a plan Jinho would follow through with, but the betrayal from the other guys definitely struck a chord in some. Not so much in the novel since the betrayal was expected, but in the manhwa that constant muttering of how was portrayed like this. He was truly unsettled by the fact he- This is, I think, the monologue that he has, the schizo attack, when he, you know, gets the quest to, like, kill people, right, and he's on the ground? He'd forgotten the world of hunters was governed by survival of the fittest. When he really thought hard about what it was making him so naive, the only answer he could come up with was his repetition. Time and time again, he'd enter- I guess always living the loser's life, right? That's the only way that he could think. So now, it's hard. Even though he's become strong, it's still hard for him to kind of break out of old habits. Dungeon, and time and time again, he'd return, recover, then go back for more. Since he'd always overcome the life and death situations being a hunter came with, he'd eventually come to believe that dungeons were safe. He'd forgotten that each was a genuine tug of war. Dungeons were safe? Death, and Only because Ju He is there fucking healing your ass. He'd forgotten that just recently he'd almost lost that tug of war. So, as soon as he remembered what it was being a hunter meant, he had also come to realize what it was the system wanted from him. Kill. It was a revelation made clear when the. Quest info Urgent quest defeat the enemies. They're enemies that intend to kill the player, destroy all the foes, and ensure your safety if you fail to follow these orders. Your heart will stop beating. Uh, number of foes to defeat, eight. So in the webtoon, there was actually eight people to kill. Okay. Emergency quest changed right in front of him, and it's what I personally believe to be one of Sung's most important turning points. Reason being that by changing player to you and- Those with murderous intent towards the player have been detected. That's right, the system like flagged it. The penalty to a straight up death threat, the message being sent was no longer something he could consider as part of a game anymore. It was now a direct message to him that simply said, do the quest or I'll kill you. But like, it is still a game. A fucked up way, and we're the player. Are there multiple players? Is this the only game that exists? What is going on? Is it simply the battle of gods? I think the Otaku Spirit mentioned this too, but the battle of gods concept is, think of like, there's like moderators or gods that like created this game, right? They're the gods, and there's multiple gods they all have their own player, and it's like a tournament to see whose player is the strongest because the gods are just bored or some kind of concept like that. Initially, it had left him a bit confused, but whatever shock he had at its aggressive nature quickly changed to comfort as he finally realized something. He understood now that the system was here to stay. Before, he'd always worried that perhaps one day the system might vanish, but... I feel like the system is just like helping him. Because it's like, it's like, the system also benefits, right? The instance dungeon 2 was like quite well 
scale to his level at that time. Like, they could have thrown us into the fucking deep end, but they're kind of slowly building us up. So, like, what does the system get if we keep getting stronger? There has to be some kind of trade-off that we don't know yet. And this is, again, like, really endgame plot that might not even be addressed in a show like this. Like, we might think that there's, like, really interesting plots, but sometimes, like, they, like, the author sometimes, like, fumbles. And, like, the, all the mysteries in the beginning, there's less, it's just, like, a disappointment in the end. Hopefully that's not what happens. Now that was something he knew he no longer needed to be concerned with. I mean, it was only natural to think this strange occurrence could disappear as quickly as it appeared, and it was that thought that constantly plagued Sung's mind up until now. He neither knew how nor why this system was given to him, so it was that uncertainty which made him fear he might just lose it one day. Well, he, like, earned it through the courage of the weak, right? That whole double dungeon was, like, the system trying to see if there's, like, a worthy candidate to receive the, the system's powers, and Sung Jin Woo somehow is the perfect candidate? I don't know. As soon as he saw the emergency quest tell him to kill, though, that's when he knew the system needed him as much as he needed it. If it didn't, then it wouldn't have had to use a I mean, it's, we, the system needs us, but like, it was straight up saying like, yo, I'm gonna stop your heart if you don't kill them. So I guess we're very easily disposable, and the system is willing to just find a new player. Like, really? You, you, you would think that like, we're super valuable, and the system is like, I don't know, would treat us a little bit better, but... Penalty to force him to kill here. The system would have instead provided him an option to avoid the danger. It's because it didn't, though, that that's how Sung knew the system had a goal of its own now. It didn't just want to make Sung stronger out of convenience or kindness, just but make instead him a needed him to be strong for... Be a killer! Well, ...who knows what. That exact what didn't really matter, though, since... Damn! Sung this is what he looks like in the webtoon? Like, this is, like, the current chapter in the anime? To Sung, the only thing... Look at this, like, dark aura that's, like, emanating from him. I don't know if it means anything, because, like... Some people are like, no, bro, this is his true powers activating. And other people are like, no, you dumb motherfuckers. This is just the artistic design. It's just aesthetics, dude. It's just his power aura. It doesn't mean anything. And I'm like, I don't know. It just looks cool. The thing that did matter was the necessity for him to get there somehow. The system needed him to be stronger. And in order to get him there, it would even have him kill other hunters to do so. Luckily, this wasn't something Sung was too pressed by, since so long as the system's goals coincided with his own desires, he would happily be used by it and continue to use it. As long as we can use it too. It was a small price to pay if it meant he could hold on to this phenomenon indefinitely. Thus, the feeling of comfort in the face of what should have been imminent death. You know what? Tidbit not I would start feeling like if there was ever a threat, like, like, I would get addicted to the high of becoming stronger and be in constant fear that the system might ditch me because then I can't level up anymore. So I'd probably spend, like, all waking moments just grinding and leveling as fast as I can to, like, to reach the cap before the system ditches me. That's what I'd be doing. Not shown in the anime after this was the inner thoughts of Gyuhan after Huang made fun of him. Who the fuck is Gyuhan? Just random NPC that we killed, okay. You see, after hitting Sung with oh, the magician was guy. his strongest spell, he was more than nervous to see this supposed E-rank just get back up from it. <laughs> As a spell that used one third of his total mana, if that wasn't enough to kill him, then nothing else he had would. It was the reason he looked so anxious in the anime here. Did he? The guy on the right looks the most anxious. <laughs> Gyuhan looks a little disappointed. Huang Dong Suk on the left is like, the fuck? <laughs> and then the guy on the right looks like he just said, Jesus Christ, come out of the fucking cave. Another comedic bit with one of the other hunters was the way that this one had tried to intimidate Sung. We didn't get to see this in the anime this either, idiot, but dude. his position here was actually him trying to put Sung into a headlock. He would wrap his arm, then apply as much downward force Bro as he he's could, being but so no matter suave. how hard he tried, Sung just wouldn't bend. So he was like, come on, fucking move. Why aren't you moving? Then ching. It was once this hunter realized Sung was just significantly stronger than him that he knew for lack of a better term that he fucked up. This would then lead to a part in the Monwo where Sung would remember only the strong survive, and that in turn would lead to him going into demon mode. So, Gyuhan would be the first to go after this, then after that it would be the other side. Damn, Gyuhan got done dirty, holy shit. That other dude just got his head sliced off. Gyuhan got like 20 different cuts, holy. After that it would be the other six hunters. Most was either through an application of bleeder paralysis, but for those sliced to pieces, they were probably the lucky ones. If you're wondering what exactly Drain. did, 
Well, any person afflicted would lose 1%. It says bleed here, right? But I, it says effect bleed. I, it drain and bleed. It's the same shit, right? Any person afflicted would lose 1% health every second. I'm not sure if that's percent max health or percent current health, but I would assume max since the hunters afflicted with it ended up dying anyway. And that's the thing. It's like if it's 1%, is that like stackable? So like more bleed, more bleed, more bleed. So instead of 1% every second, it's like 1% plus 1% plus how many times we've slashed them, you know? So if we technically slash them 100 times in that one second, it'd be 100 1%. So therefore all his health gone. Does that make sense? Now. The core attribute which made this fight so incredibly easy was Sun's agility and its ability to make him see things Dude, easier. this is the coolest shit. When he just like disappears in place. Dude, look at his eyes, man. Look at this shit. The easy was Sun's agility. Boom, just dodges. And its ability to Hello and the glowing eyes. That's the best part. I love the glowing eyes. See things easier. To him, everyone was just a whole lot slower and to them, he was just a whole lot faster. That's agility, right? That's all agility. Perceiving things at a faster rate with your mental acuity and being able to react to it. That's agility, right? It was another instance in which the relative nature of speed was highlighted. So, as he weaved and dodged, cutting everyone down in the process, his final move was a ruthless choke slam, leaving Huang grasping for air. Bro, this fucking slam was like synchronized with the song Dark Aria too. This is so cool. Unlike how he beheaded Huang in the anime though, Sung instead kept his grip and continued to squeeze harder. Oh, ending Huang's gorilla life in a far grip. More brutal manner some may oh, wait, we just like squeezed his head open. Find unbefitting to his character. What I mean is that while decapitation can be seen as this swift okay. move done out of necessity, crushing his neck feels more like something only a trained, cold-blooded killer would do. It was yeah. a far edgier move than what I would expect from Sung since his first kill was literally only a few moments ago. That was so cool though. There's like his first kill was so nonchalant. Bro wasn't even making eye contact. Bro was like thinking about something else and he just goes shing. That didn't mean he wasn't particularly shaken by it, but after all was done, his heart was still beating normally. It was beating no different than how it would had he just been walking in the park. Leading huh. Sung to think that perhaps something else about him had changed. He's changed. Perhaps the system wasn't the only thing instilled within him after the double dungeon. Perhaps the system. What, what did you just say? Wasn't the only thing instilled. Perhaps the system wasn't the only thing instilled in him. Within him after the double dungeon. I guess it's just like survivor mentality. I I, well, I, I don't know. It's just that he's faced so much different threats and dire situations that this doesn't feel as serious anymore, combined with his new power, so he's just pretty nonchalant. This wasn't something Sung would spend much time thinking about though, as the rewards he earned would turn his attention elsewhere. Bloodlust. I think that's the intimidate skill, right? Negative 50% all stats on the people? Specifically at his brand new skill, Bloodlust. Yeah. Since skills were something only gained through runestones, this was- Skills are gained through runestones or the quest can give us skills too. The most Aww. valuable thing that he'd earned that day. I mean, he did after all defeat the spider only because of his sprint skill. So with one more added to his arsenal. I, I guess the sprint was that cool, huh? I mean, I thought this is just extra mobility because how did we even beat the spider? It's just like repeated attacks into the fucking head because it was so hard, wasn't it? I forget. So with one more added to his arsenal, Sung was ecstatic knowing his kit had one more option in it. And I think this is now a good point to start investing points into int because they have like mana cost, right? The sprint also had like a mana cost. I'm sure murderous intent does too. Now we have a reason to actually invest in int. It was a great reward that- Assuming our mana would increase with int, I would hope so. Matched the severity of the penalty. One he could only relish in for a little bit since the cost of attaining it was rather hefty. When he remembered the people he had to kill to earn it, the reward honestly didn't seem that amazing anymore. What? The Wiping out Huang Dong Suk's trash party to get a fucking AoE debuff on vision negative 50% all stats? I feel like the reward is way better, way better than the trash humans that we took out. Am I crazy? This now brings us to the final scene with Jin Ho, in which the whole thing was just Sung figuring out what to do with him. So, when Jin Ho came to Sung begging like, to let him live, look, look, Sung look, look. Was the kid is nice. I, 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 wait, let him live? No, 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 I thought he just said live like with us in our fucking apartment. No, no, but like, look at the kid, right? He's terrified. You can't tell me he's not actually terrified of Sung Jin Mu after what he's seen. Initially unsure as to how to proceed, quickly realized managing him would be a whole lot easier. I mean, with fear already working towards his advantage, 
All he needed to do was lean into it a bit, then Jinho would keep it. I don't want to, like, manipulate the kid. Hopefully, it goes into a cool big bro, little bro relationship and they're homies, right? I hope that's what comes from it. And this kid is super rich. We shouldn't take advantage of his money. But I'm sure, for whatever reasons, like, funding for different projects, you know, you're going to need money in this world to survive. So, like... Him having all that money and the fact that his dad has like a networking skills, like it's valuable. It's, it's very valuable to keep this kid around. His mouth shut forever. Unfortunately, Sung leaned in a little bit too hard. So when he asked Jin Ho why he should let him live, he could literally sense Jin. <laughs> he straight up asked, why should I let you live in the web team? <laughs> okay. Jin Ho's heart falls straight into his stomach, leading Jin Ho to offer money and whatever else he could. Of what course, else? This wasn't the type What's of she offering? Song was so after getting even angrier at the bribe Jinho tried to make, Jinho knew he had to readjust his understanding of the type. Wait, Jinho like offered some extra money and shit, and Sung Jin Mu like proceeded as a bribe. The person Sung was. He would think back on everything he'd just witnessed, then eventually come to the conclusion that Sung was a patron of effort. He was a person who had no problem looting a boss for every last essence stone, but at the same time wasn't someone willing to accept handouts. So to Jin Ho, this could only be indicative of one single thing, and it was that Sung wanted nothing to do with anything he didn't properly earn himself. Okay. If it wasn't something he fought tooth and nail for, then it wasn't something that Sung would want. That's the reason he denied Jin Ho's bribe so vehemently. So what the Jin bribe. Ho needed to offer instead was a proposition worthy of Sung sparing his life. Bad. Take me as your apprentice! One that Sung would know he earned through his efforts in the dungeon, yet one that wasn't meaningless like Jin Ho's father's Be money. my friend! It was a thought that eventually led to the idea of giving Sung all the essence cores. Something I'm oh. sure we'll see mentioned okay. in the next episode. Uh, it's, I mean, the kid doesn't need the fucking money. Like, he doesn't need any of that, right? He's got so much money, it's not even a fucking problem. Sung had also gone to loot the two million he was owed from Huang's wallet, then it was after that that the two would finally depart the dungeon. Dude, we should have seen the looting of the corpses, that would have been fun. The reason I mention this bit of grave robbery is because it's indicative of the fact that Huang wasn't always planning to betray Sung. I mean, if they cut off the tail every time they entered a gate, then eventually people would start to get suspicious of them. So- I mean, apparently not, because there's like no referees or any like admins to like- regulate any of these dungeons. They've been getting away with it every time, right? Had those mana crystals not showed up right at the end, then the raid probably would have just finished normally. It just so happened that things went to turn out this way. But yeah, that's pretty much it for episode 6. A fantastic okay. episode opening up the doors to what solo leveling really has to offer. I hope you enjoyed seeing what it is the anime left out, and if you did, then be sure to let me know. Y'all know what to do. Please go give Mr. Anonews a sub to his channel. Like his video if you enjoyed it. We always love whatever cut content that he gives us. Sometimes he might... He doesn't really spoil. He does a pretty good job at it. I enjoy watching his videos. And yes, I think episode 6 is like... Definitely the... I, I think episode 2 is a turning point. Episode 4 is pretty much another turning point. I feel like episode 6 is a turning point. Like every episode, every, every increment of 2 has been like really amazing. If you're like not sold by the show, like... That's just it, right? Sometimes you're just not built for these kind of anime. There's nothing wrong with it. You can go enjoy, you know, some other shows that you want to watch. But so far, I feel like if you haven't given this a fair shot, you should because it's that good.